All right, guys, I have an update. Uh, living here in my shed, out here in the wilderness. Uh, it has been over six months now since I moved here, uh, w living in my shed. People must, people have been, may have been wondering if I, I if I, ran into troubles where, you know, get violated by criminals or bad people out there. Especially when you live here by yourself with no one else around you, no other people living nearby, you know. You know, you are all here by yourself. I mean, there are few homeless people that live not far from here uh, but it's you are out to uh, you become more vulnerable because you don't have police control, you don't have a people if it were security watching over you. So a lot of people feel insecure. You know they would they don't want they're hesitant. They don't want to move out. They don't want to live in a wilderness. You know, you would feel safer living in an apartment or house. I moved out here, living here in my shed, uh, out of faith, out of plain faith in trust in God, because He will protect me, watch over me, and guide me every step of the way. It's all done out of faith, not uh, out of my own will. Um, there have been moments, a uh, lot of, there have been times where I felt insecure. I felt uh, uh, I had anxiety, you know, worrying about bad people or criminals, you know, coming over and attack me or rob me. Uh, no, I didn't get living here for over six months. Uh, nobody, I nobody has come to attack me. I didn't get robbed. Uh, I, nobody came to destroy my shed. Uh, you know, vandalism. Nothing like that. Nothing got stolen. And and I didn't get attacked by anyone. Uh, not to the point where you get violated by the criminals or um, become a victim uh, of crime. So I have been all right. I um, all that comes from God's protection and His management of my life and around me. So. I've been living here. My life still has been very difficult, actually much more difficult than ever before. Even though I didn't get physically attacked by the criminals or the bad people, uh, I had a plenty of hard times here living in my shed. Mostly spiritual attack. Living in my shed, my life, uh, trying to draw um, I don't know diagram or graph to better explain it spiritual tech and this here is 
physical attack. Or it doesn't even have to be, have to be attack. It can be physical uh, unfortunate incidents. More of a physical side of it. This is like, I don't know, uh, maybe 5% of my time of my life here in living in my shed out here in the wilderness. 5%. Spiritual attack, 95%. 95%, maybe more, maybe 98%. You don't have to get physically attacked or get into trouble to have hard, painful life. Spiritual attack alone can destroy you, can, can be devastating and, in, and can destroy your life. Uh, I've been suffering a lot from spiritual attack. Because this goes on every day, on a daily basis. Both during the day and night, even when you sleep. So this is much more dangerous, much more deadly than physical. Uh, it derived from the physical incidents, physical attack. People that got, got sent or allowed uh to hurt me to offend me that can go on for a long time because spiritual attack because um spiritual attack comes from the incidents people that hurt you in the past and you can't forget it the attack goes on and on it's very complicated because it's not simply, it's not something you can control. You can, it's not something you can just plug it up, block it so that you don't think about it. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. It's not that easy. It's un virtually uncontrollable because whenever you, whenever you feel negative or do something, anything wrong, uh, that is against God's will, even smallest things, even just for a matter of a few seconds, the devil, the demons, the devil will attack you. The devil knows what you don't like and what you like. Devil knows what, what bothers you the most and what hurts you the most to get you to angry. So the devil will bring those thoughts back from the past when you had bad moments, when you had somebody that hurt you, devil will bring that back into your mind and aggravate it and make it worse to get you to angry, get you to hate. Um, and you have all sorts of evil thoughts. It will escalate into bigger hate, uh, crime, violence in your heart, in your mind. That is part of spiritual attack. You know, the devil will thrive you. He will, the devil will drive you into, into more uh, anger, evil thoughts against somebody or anybody. And you end up hating any people. You get angrier and angrier and you get more and more defensive and you become you become more hateful and you end up hating anybody it's all truth that's how people suffer us uh, from spiritual attack people out there that are suffering even people that are mentally retarded they're all suffering it all comes from the spiritual attack this is so deadly, so dangerous, and you can't avoid it. And especially this is mostly given 
by God, administered by God for Christians, people that follow Jesus, people, his children, people that follow him. They are not only they're more vulnerable, more sensitive, because they are more sensitive spiritually, they get attacked even more. They really get attacked because the devil will be all over you. The demons are out to want to destroy you. And unfortunately, God allows that. That's the sad part. God doesn't just protect you so that you don't get spiritual attack at all. God doesn't block it so that you become spiritual attack free. It doesn't work like that. You know, if you don't have a spiritual attack, then you have no pain. This will be gone. And only thing you have to do worry about is maybe 3 to 5% of physical troubles. Even not even that. Because God has control over everything. You know? And you would have no problem in your life. You would have an enjoyable, fun life out here in the wilderness or anywhere even living in an apartment. It doesn't matter what location, where you go, where you live, what kind of life you live, whether you live in apartments, in a house, in a shed. It doesn't matter. God administers pain and suffering, long suffering. Pain. is carrying the cross for God, for Jesus. That's the truth. I wanted to share that uh, it's, this is truth. You know, people may have different kind of pain because everybody is different. God will administer pain accordingly for every individual for their, from what they can handle. Uh, because everybody is unique and they're different from one another. Uh, but I've been suffering a lot from spiritual attack and, I, and this will go on forever until you die. So... Um, Even though God, God, pro, God has been protecting me so that I don't get robbed. He told me that, and that that my my shed will be protected. And he did what he he did what he uh, what he was what he told me that he will do. You know, God does not lie. So I'm safe here out here nobody has come to violate me or rob me and not even the cops you know police and the uh the property owner the railroad management people they had they never came back they never came back to to talk to me to tell to to move out you know nobody has bothered after they came to me, talked to me about it the first time when I told them, when I had a talk with them, you know, they said, I'm okay to live here, that they're not going to kick me out. They kept their word uh, and uh, they never came back to, to, to tell me to leave, to get out of here. So I'm, I'm safe here to live in my shed. That is what God wants because He has plans for me. Preparation. And to live outside of government, government system, governmental control and system. He wants me to get out of it. And He wants me to prepare. So because I have been having so much pain, actually it was the worst 
This is um, last year December. 20, 2020 and then here's 2021 January February March December was or torture even worse December was the ab December and January was the absolute worst in my life it was like the peak peak season of pain um, not only the weather that not only the harsh weather we had a cold winter we had a bad uh, wi winter a lot of snow a lot of wind a lot of sleet uh it's been rough it was it's been rough but that's not what i'm talking about if if that's all i had if 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 bad weather was all i had that would be like piece of cupcake that would be nothing it, it wouldn't be even qualified as pain it was really bad because not only the bad weather against me to bring me troubles but the spiritual attack uh, made it much worse. And on top of that, God, Jesus, God specifically administered me more pain, like torture. He nearly cured me like two times, two to three times. It was spiritual pain that felt worse than physical pain it was worse than a physical pain where somebody tried to strangle you to death it was worse and I felt so terrible because I'm I've been living here by myself all by myself with nobody else living in my shed I felt so helpless I felt so pitiful. December and January was the worst I had in my in my life. Um, a lot of bad things happened, and spiritual attack, and nearly tortured to death. It was all for God's kingdom. It was to. It was for offering pain and suffering. Even though I didn't mean to give it, I told God, I, I don't want to give you suffering. I'm, I don't want to offer any more pain. I'm, I, I had enough. I'm tired. I had enough. I don't want it. I don't, I don't want to offer any more pain than what I already got. Well, you don't have a choice because God will administer it anyway. So you have no choice but to take, to, to receive pain and suffering and torture. It's the truth, guys. If you are God's follower, Jesus' follower, you are His children, you will go through pain. You cannot get by, you cannot bypass, you cannot be pain-free. You will have some sort of pain that is bad enough where it gets really bad. Um, this pain eased down a little bit into February and March. Um, and I'm worn out. I'm tired. So now when even, when even a littlest things, any littlest things of bad things happen. Anything that is even a little bit negative. You know, because I'm so spiritually weak and tired. Mentally, I'm mentally wounded. Mentally tired, fed up with it. So I can't even take a little bit of pain. Even, even 3% of 
a pain that you think is bad or what you can handle. I can't even take 3% of it, not even 2%. And in some case, even if there's no pain, 0%, 0%, I make anger out of myself using spiritual tech. Okay? So I make my own problem so that 0% becomes 100%. Um, because I'm so tired. You become very sensitive and very negative. Easy, you're very prone to get negative and become destructive spiritually. So I've been going through a lot of troubles, a lot of suffering, a lot of problems. And God knows that. Jesus knows your condition. And He is understanding. He understands why you do this. He knows you are tired. He knows you are worn out. God knows that. I want to guide people know that God is not cold-hearted, misunderstanding God. He knows your condition and your situation deep down in your hearts. So, um, hopefully things will get better. And Jesus, God sends you uh, humanitarian humanitarian aid. Just like they do in, in war, people fighting in wars, you know, they, they send they make they drop shipment from airplane from war planes to drop aid you know so that you can heal so that you can refuel so that you'll be provided with goods and weapons whatever you need to to live to continue on to continue with your duty it's same way with god God does provide you aid. He will send aid to heal you, to energize you. And Jesus um, um, is giving me a present. He's gonna. He's giving me. He actually showed me because he knows I like bikes, a uh, mountain bike. There's a mountain bike, nice mountain bike that I want to have. And I was looking at $3,000 mountain bikes. Because those are cool stuff. And I love riding bikes. And I'm a professional rider. I've been in, I was a professional, or like a professional bike rider, athlete when I was uh, in the teens, back in early 1990, I used to ride bike a lot. I even joined time trial, group rides, training rides, group rides with the other race team members. I have done a lot when I was young and I still like bikes and I like riding bicycle. Even though I already have uh, mountain bike and a road bike. My mountain bike um, is cheap bike. I got it for two hundred twenty dollars from eBay. I got that bike just for transportation, for for backup, for you know, it's not really meant for recreational joyride. Well, I told God I want to have a joy ride. I want something that is not only for to be used as a workhorse, but also to be used for for joy ride, for my hobby. And God knows that. God knows your what you like, what you want. And Jesus literally showed me a bike. Uh, even though he wanted me to 
have a nice bike, but he told me, he showed me a bike that cost $2,200. Uh, I didn't look for it. It just popped up right in front of my face when I was on the web. Jesus told me that that's the bike he wants me to have. It's a nice red Canyon Exceed CF7 mountain bike. It's a very nice bike. And Jesus revealed to me that this bike, uh, don't underestimate the price. Don't, under, don't underestimate the bike because it's cheaper than the $3,000 or $2,800 bikes that I looked at. Turned out that this bike is just as good as $3,000 bike. Uh, turned out that the components that it uses, the, the component tree, the group set, um, the equipment, the what, what it's equipped with is just as good as the $3,000 bike, if not better. Jesus knows what bike works for you. Jesus knows what bike, he knows the truth. He knows the truth. And Jesus told me that this bike uh, is really good. Better than I thought. And, it's, and that there is no point wasting money. He doesn't want, he said, I don't need to go $3,000 to have a decent bike. This $2,200 bike will be just as good if not better. Uh, and he wants me to have it. He told me that over and over. He confirmed to me over and over and reminded me over and over. It's not out of my own imagination. Jesus told me that personally. Uh, he wants to get me this bike as a gift, as a humanitarian aid. Because this is like a fuel, fuel booster. You need a fuel to to get you get get up get back up and running. It's the same way. He knows that this will give me strength to continue to serve God, to continue to have strength, so that I can serve Him well, so that I can serve Him continuously. That's what it is. Jesus told me that He know He knows. He knows. Um, so he's not a harsh God. You know, even though this $2,200 bike or $3,000 bike, it may seem unreasonable because you you are living out here in the wilderness. You know, you are like living in a, like a homeless status. You know, it, it's from the worldly point of view, this is like unreasonable. Don't you guys agree? You know, it's unreasonable. You know, you don't have enough security. You're not living in a controlled environment. You don't have a security guard to watch over your place. Like in apartments. You know, you are out here uh, you're susceptible. You are vulnerable to attack by thieves. But no, Jesus says not to worry. You don't need, Jesus says you don't need to worry about getting robbed. That is not your concern, Jesus says. You don't need to worry about getting robbed. Uh, he doesn't want you to worry. Jesus doesn't want you to worry. Jesus doesn't want you to fear because fear is the one of the worst enemy. Jesus, fear is one of the Worst things you could do, it could give you all kinds of trouble, and it goes the, against the will of God. God hates fear and worry. They're basically the same thing. Worry turns into fear. This is very deadly weapon. Uh, God hates this. He said, be great, be hopeful. Even though it may seem unreasonable to worldly view, it's perfectly fine for God, Jesus says. 
it's okay with him. As long as it's okay with him, it's not a problem. You got nothing to worry about. Um, so don't worry. Don't limit Jesus. What Jesus is saying is don't limit yourself. Don't prevent yourself from wanting to have something because you feel you're going, you're going to get robbed by thieves or even people that may hurt you get angry because you have a nice stuff. Jesus says, don't, Jesus says, don't worry about any of that. My point, Jesus has planned for me and he looks, he is 10 steps, 15 steps, 20 steps ahead of us. He sees the future. He has things planned for me and you. Um, he's more God is concerned, more concerned about how to how to serve Him, how to be continue to be faithful, how to continue to obey Him, and He wants to give me fuel booster, humanitarian aid. All this is, a, you know, a coordination with God. God does give you something to give you strength. You know, bike is what I like. Maybe you guys like something else. Whatever, whatever that you like, God knows what you like. And this expensive bike is not unreasonable to God. It's perfectly reasonable to God. He has, he's in different level. God is in totally different level. And we can't go by the worldly ways because God is way different and that you have to adapt to his ways, his standards. That's what I'm trying to get at. You cannot go by the worldly ways because then you go the wrong way. So don't worry about the cost, Jesus says. It's okay with him. So he's going to try to get me. He's going to get me one. I just don't know exactly when. How? I know that stimulus checks have been coming. And there are more stimulus checks to come. Jesus told me that also. There are more and more coming. And that he has plans. And that there will be big, even bigger and bigger purchases coming to prepare um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that, um, hopefully, uh, I can get the bike soon, I don't know, maybe in a month, maybe more, I don't know, Jesus didn't say, but I know that it's coming soon, um, because he also wants me to prepare for the, for my shed, for insulation, and make furniture. He wants me to uh, start making furniture also, like bookshelves, shelves that go on the wall. I need to put a lot of stuff on the wall because I don't want all the stuff laying around on the floor. Uh, it limits foot space. So that means I will need power tools to make stuff. And all that is part of plan, part of part of his plan. Um, it's a project. So all those projects are coming. So hopefully this will get better as when it gets into summer, spring and summer. Uh, but there's still pain, plenty of pain here. I'm not pain free. I wanted to let you guys know that it's you don't it's you won't get pain free. As long as you follow God, you will continue to have pain. Um, yeah, it may sound like a bad news, but it's the truth, guys. It's the truth. Uh, what else? Yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, I will provide updates with, uh, with the shed and other stuff. Uh, as time goes on. Alright, well. 
Uh, Jesus bless you.